I consider spirituality to be built around our capacity or ability to experience something more than what's given in an immediate situation. Let me explain that by way of an example. Suppose I'm walking down the street and I see a beautiful bed of flowers in bloom. If I'm in my normal state of consciousness, I'll think, oh, those are pretty flowers, and I'll probably just keep right on walking. But because of this spiritual dimension of my life, I'm able to be more mindful, to focus more on the flowers, and that focus may lead me to consider a variety of different things. Perhaps I'll look at a particular flower and think, it's so beautiful, but yet it's so fragile. Or I may look at the bed of flowers and think, there's so much like life itself, that life comes into full bloom and then in time just withers and fades, and that's the cycle. Or seeing the beautiful flowers may cause me to consider how wonderful life is with all of its variety and how we need to protect the environment. All of these things are subjective. They're about my dialogue with what I experience in life. And it's this added quality, this more than, that enables me to experience something deep and rich in life. And, and that's the stuff of spirituality. That's how spirituality operates in our life. Many writers and speakers on spirituality don't really address human sexuality. And I think that's because we typically consider sexuality as something dirty or base or sinful, and we connote guilt and, and shame with sexuality. But I don't think those are accurate descriptions of sexuality at all. Our sexuality is part of who we are, and just as we're able to experience something more in every aspect of our life that's meaningful and gives our life a sense of purpose. So that's also true with our sexuality. Our sexuality, by its very nature, draws us out of ourself. I mean, consider for a moment sexual attraction. It draws us towards beauty, towards something that may be fulfilling, something that we want in our life, that we want to touch and be touched by. And, and that there's something very fulfilling about that, as well as pleasurable and fun and playful. Roman Catholic theologian and a Jesuit priest, John McNeil, understood that the way we typically think of sexuality is just wrong. Outside of in issues of abuse and rape and incest, human sexuality begins as something that's good as something that's whole, as something that, that's very much part of our nature and the way we were made to be. John understood that as we grew and integrated sexuality more and more with our life, that it moved from this place of being profoundly good to in a sense being better and best. So that there was an evolution, an opportunity for growth in terms of how we experience our sexuality as we grow as people and become more whole and more rounded people. And I think John had some very good insights to that. Uh, a simpler way of explaining that, though, may be from the writings of Alice Walker in her novel, The Color Purple. Now, this is a portion that isn't in the movie or play, but that's in the novel, a conversation that takes place between Suge Avery and Seeley. If you remember, Seely experienced sexuality as something abusive. She was repeatedly raped and treated very harshly around sex. And Shogavery says to Seely, sexuality, it's some of the best stuff God made. Think about that. It's some of the best stuff God made. Shogavery was pointing to the fact that sex is about pleasure and creativity and playfulness. And our sexuality, from this perspective, draws us out of ourself in a creative way and enables us to join with another, where in a sense, two of us can merge together and, and give each other mutual pleasure and experience of joy with each other. And in doing that, we return to ourself renewed, refreshed, enlivened, and empowered in new ways. So that our sexuality is a fundamental part of us that is multidimensional. 
and can't be reduced to, to simple dimensions, but is a very complex experience and renews and, and strengthens our life. Now, it doesn't matter how it is that we express our sexuality. And by that, I mean some of us are married or have long-term partners, or and some of us are on sort of a different end of the pendulum and live celibate lives or find ourselves to be asexual. However it is that we're expressing our sexuality, what I'm saying is still true, that it's this fundamental force with us that enables us to express creativity and connection that draws us beyond ourselves to experience something about life in a fuller and life-affirming way. And from that perspective, John McNeil was truly right. It is profoundly good. Thanks for being with me today. I appreciate your time. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and leave me some comments so that I can respond back.